Thanks everyone uh, again for coming. All right, so um, so today my goal is really to uh, talk about um, uh, some measure rigidity on homogeneous setup uh, for measures that is invariant under horospecial subgroup, uh, both in higher rank and lower rank. And uh, all of this is in joint work with uh, Orr Landesberg, uh, Linden Strauss, and Hio. All right, so. Um, Okay, so let me start uh, by explaining the setup. So we have a uh, semi-simple realizable group G. And uh, so now what's a, what's a horospherical subgroup? Uh, one way to define this is to say that uh, your group is horospherical if there exists a group element such that your group uh, consists of exactly those elements um, which gets contracted to the identity uh, when you iterate this conjugation map. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm going to call a uh, horospherical a uh, maximum horospherical subgroup if, if it is a maximal element among all the horos horospherical subgroups. And I'm going to call uh, gamma is going to be a Zariski dense discrete subgroup. All right, and I'm going to follow the conventions from previous lectures. Um, uh, basically, I just, let me briefly repeat it. So G is going to be a semi simple real algebraic group, and I'm going to fix. A maximal horospherical subgroup. So, in, in the example of SA3R, you have this upper triangle matrix, and I'm going to uh, fix a Cartan subgroup, or maximal real split towards, which is this diagonal group. Uh, and then I also fix a maximal compact subgroup and this minimal parabolic, and M is going to be the centralizer of uh, A inside K. Um, okay, so and you can see that all of, all of the subgroups appearing here is, is um, uh, uh, maybe not all. Um, so you're going to fix this, but you have to uh, some restrict some compatibility relation. For example, A and K should be orthogonal with respect to killing form, and so on. So I fix such groups, and now I want to consider this uh, action. So you have uh, yeah, you have a uh, homogeneous space, and you have a maximum horizontal subgroup, which I called N. So you have uh, action by right translation. So you have a dynamical system. Uh, the like, first question you can ask is, uh, what are the OB closures or what are the invariant measures? And uh, here we're going to focus on the second problem. So basically what I want to know is, um, what can we say about the uh, measures, Radon measure or locally finite Borel measure on G1 gamma that is an invariant and ergodic, where n is maximum or strict subgroup. Um, like, and I'm going to omit this, uh, this adjective locally finite and Borel. I'm going to assume this throughout the talk. Okay, uh, so what's the, what's the basic examples? So first example is a uh, hard measure. Hard measure on G with gamma. And so you have an invariant measure where gamma is a lattice. Uh, Even if gamma is a lattice, I mean, not a lattice, it is a still invariant measure, right? Right, 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 right. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry. Oh, sorry, I, I, I wanted to say, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Oh, here is ergodic. Ah, uh, ergodic. Yes, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes, okay. yeah. Sorry, I, I thought I missed. It. Okay, so invariant is clear. Uh, ergodicity is uh, like consequence of more. Uh, as a second example, uh, if this appears when you have a closed orbit, closed n orbit inside G mod gamma, then you have a closed orbit that you can um, find an n invariant measure, <coughs> and it's going to be ergodic for tri trivial reason because it's like the group action transitive. Okay, and then there's a third example, which is call, called burger roblang measure. Um, this, can, uh, this can be defined for geometric finite subgroup or any subgroup, actually. Uh, and in rank one, when gamma is geometric finite subgroup, this is known to be uh, an ergodic. Uh, I'm going to define this maybe in a in few slides later, and this is due to uh, burger roblang and Winter. Um, I'm going to mention this later. Okay, so these are examples of uh, any invariant ergodic measures. And um, uh, okay, so, so now when you consider this any invariant uh, ergodic measures, uh, under certain conditions, then um, you can say that by merely requiring this uh, any invariance, we force a strong restriction on the measure itself. And like these uh, statements along these lines are all, ca all called uh, measure rigidity, depending on people. And um, uh, I'd like to briefly go over some of the important results. Uh, I don't uh, mean to be very exhaustive on this, but okay, so 
probably the most uh, successful case when it's gamma isolated. Um, so throughout the talk, my mu is going to be an n invariant algorithm measure on this gamma. gamma. Uh, then uh, what is known? So theorem due to uh, Furstenberg Vich Danny. Um, so it says if you come isolated, and if we have uh, an invariant ergodic measure, uh, then there are only two cases. So either mu is a hard measure or um, mu is supported on a closed n orbit, which was uh, one of uh, which was the example from pre previous slides. Um, I think Furstenberg uh, Furstenberg did this for uh, horizontal flow for SL2R, and then you reach uh, this for, uh, for I think, general lace, but I forgot, uh, I forgot, I forgot the reference, but um, um, yeah, basically this is due to Furstenberg, Rich, and Danny. Um, so here I'm considering the invariant measure for horizontal subgroup, but there is a um, uh, Uber theorem of this, Wagner's theorem, which says that uh, uh, which gives a classification of invariant measures for a uh, much general setup. Um, and okay, so like we have this fundamental theorem. So uh, arguably we have a uh, very satisfactory result for uh, the case when gamma is a lattice. I don't think it's, I mean, in the general case, I think you can have more homogeneous measures because there are other actually semi-simple groups which contain maximum <coughs> So if this is co complete lattice, it's hard, but uh, it's for non-uniform lattice, I think there are more possibilities, but they are all homogeneous. Uh, wait, wait, wait. You, you, mean, you mean any invariant measure on? Yeah, it's not hard. For any, yeah, semi simple if you insist mm -hmm. that these are uh, arbitrary semi simple algebraic group. Yes. Yeah, even for SLN, you can have these uh, blocks, right? Like, uh, and then. Uh, You can have like a set four times a set uh -huh. four, and then all the uh, I mean the unit plus above. You can have a measure supporting there for S A and Z. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay, um, okay. Then I have to use. Okay, so let me change this to this. Yeah, this is okay. So I I will say uh, close an orbit, but um, uh, uh, how should I say this? It's a uh, measure supported on a subgroup, intermediate subgroup between uh, n and the ambient group. Okay, sorry for this. Um, okay, so, so what's the next step? So now, now we have some understanding of a lattice case. So the next question is, uh, what can you say when this, uh, this gamma is an infinite co-volume subgroup? So now I assume that uh, your gamma is a geometric finite subgroup of rank point group. And then uh, now assume that your measure is any invariant ergodic, then in the case when gamma is geometry finite, you also have a uh, full classification. Uh, so let me just read the theorem. So this is due to Berger, Roblin, Winter uh, in an increasing generality. So if you have G's, uh, G's of rank one and gamma is geometry finite, then um, the only such measures are of the form, uh, uh, the only such measures are Berger, Roblin measure. This is the notation for Berger measure. Or it, Otherwise, it's going to be supported on a closed n m or b, which is uh, so m is a group compact group that normalizes n. And so this can happen when you have a, um, some horizontal orbit bounding a cusp, or if you have a horizontal orbit that doesn't lie, that is not is, is not based at a limit point. So this is uh, these two cases are the only possibility. And uh, so the Berger did this for uh, SL two R for horizontal. Well, Roblin in, in the general setup for the unit tangent bundle, and then I think Winter did this for uh, interprove that n ergodicity, uh, whether previous to that like, gives an m ergodicity, Winter did this for the frame flow. If, um, okay, uh, maybe I should. Okay, so what is a Berger Roblin measure? Berger Roblin measure, uh, I think yesterday I defined this. Uh, uh, okay, it will appear. Some, at some point in my slide, but I define this uh, generalized Bormann reserve measure by putting um, arbitrary conformal measure on the like, first vector, second vector, and the, putting the big measure here. So if you have, um, I just wrote an explicit formula because um, um, just to be, uh, just for, uh, for the sake of completeness, but um, yeah, basically you're putting a conformal measure, I wrote, which I wrote like new sub phi, where phi Okay, so this is higher rank setup. Um, okay, so conformal measure in the first vector, and then 
In the second vector, you put uh, the k invariant measure, which is uh, also conformal, but a very special one. And then you put a Lebesgue measure. Then you have uh, this for a density formula, which defines a Virgo Roblox measure. Anyway, so that's going to be um, a very canonical measure. And then in the case gamma is geometrically finite, there exists um, uh, only one, uh, the canonical one, which is uh, given like this. All right, so, OK. And uh, what can you say if you go to the geometrically infinite subgroup of rank one group? In that case, um, uh, we don't have uh, the uh, we don't have like full classification as uh, like the previous one, uh, but but there are cases that are um, known. Uh, so here I'm like I did not write a very like exhaustive list for this. I think so if if like uh, so okay so you have a gamma which is a geometry infinite subgroup, uh, then this was observed by by B. O. and the Rappi I guess uh, that like there could be more than one uh, more than one. Uh, uh, a burger roblox measure, unlike in the previous case, where in the geometric finite case, there was a canonical one. Uh, in that case, um, there, could, there can be more than one. And then and <coughs> this uh, and that in reference. So I think that Raphia Sarik gave a um, classification for the case, uh, for the particular case, which is the following. So you, you, you look at you look at uh, some, say, gamma zero is a co-compact lattice, co-compact lattice uh, or closed surface, and then you take a normal subgroup, which is uh, whose quotient is, uh, say, z to the d. Which, like, geometrically, it means you have a surface, and then uh, you have a um, regular cover whose that group is z to the d. Uh, in that case, the rapid theory, I, uh, in that case, uh, show that that actually the set of all burger roblox measure on uh, this G1 gamma can be parameterized uh, exactly by the character of this deck group, which is like torus. Uh, this is uh, due to letter appearance and Sarik, and then I think they, they, they generalize this to a regular cover of a closed surface. Uh, and, and in particular, this case is a gamma, when gamma zero is a geometric finite and G is a rank one. And you have this ZD cover, and uh, Owen Pan proved this for uh, frame bundle level for uh, in this generality. Oh, oh, I didn't show you the statement. Okay, so st statement, sorry. Statement is that um, it's the following. If you are in this setup, then you have uh, two possibility that your measure is uh, Berger Roblox measure for some conformal measure, and in, in that case, in this particular case, you actually know that this family of conformal measure one to one corresponds to the character of that group, or uh, is a sub, uh, this is a supported on a closed uh, NM orbit. Right. We have to assume gamma is complex compact. We didn't. Uh, uh, okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so this, uh, so I made a mistake. So this is a convex program. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, then I think I think there are, yeah. I probably like omitted some reference there, and like I think uh, let Rap yeah, prove this for like for the variable curvature case also. Uh, I, okay, I, yes, I, yeah. I, okay, I think I'm like. No, it's 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 right. In the compact case, uh, Omri uh, characterizes. Uh, so <coughs> we describe them with Martin, but Omri characterizes, and then with Omri, we extend it to the finite volume. And, uh, and then Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, it's good that I can ask the audience for the reference. So, um, right. So I can go to. Um, uh, all right. So now I now want to state our, our theorem, uh, which is the uh, following. So you are still in the rank one where you have a geometry fine in infinite subgroup, uh, and you have mu is an infinite measure and ergodic on this G gamma. Um, so this is uh, joined with uh, Nandes Berg, Linus Strauss, uh, and O. So if you're in this setup, and then you assume some condition, you assume condition, and this is not the, this is not exactly the, uh, the only statement. But like for example, if you have uh, bounded injectivity radius for this geometric quotient, 
uh, then you basically get the same conclusion. So first uh, one is that uh, such measure can be al always realized as a burger of a measure associated to some, to some gamma conformal density. Uh, or is a, a measure supported on a closed orbit bounding a cusp or uh, that lies outside, that's not based at the limit set. Uh, and then this, uh, this is what's settled for G equals S1 by Landisberg and Lindenstrass previously. And our main work is for to con uh, cover the case where G is uh, other rank one group for this case. Um, so one thing to notice is that, uh, okay, so. Um, is the background injectivity raised from below? There's also, there is also this version. So if you have. Uh, uh, no, from above. Oh, oh, you're, you're asking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Down from above, but not below. Right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so gamma can be basically generated? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we just have, uh, okay, so I like, I, I, I will state the main proposition when, when we come to, okay, so here, this is not the only statement we can get. Um, so basically this statement is coming from uh, obtaining additional invariance additional invariance under uh, a certain um, projection map, like a Jordan project. I, I will describe this, but that will allow you to, like, uh, this is like strong restriction on the measure, so that will allow you to uh, conclude like things like this. So for example, I think if, if you have injectivity radius bounded uh, from s below, then like, you can make a statement. You don't get a classification, but you can make a statement like, uh, for, for such mu, like mu almost every point, uh, the injectivity radius goes to infinity, or you get some invariance, uh, additional invariance. Okay, uh, and the, the one another thing is uh, that this conformal measure nu, um, here you just say, you know that this is a conformal measure, but you don't have a classification as in previous case. So it's a measure rigidity, but um, not a like, full classification. But it says, this gives you strong restrictions. Okay, uh, so this is a uh, higher rank. Yeah. Do you have any guess on the possible classification or examples of possible classes? Uh, I, I don't know. For uh, yeah, I just have a, I just like don't have a like candidate for this, but I I suppose. Okay, uh, yeah, like I guess like for higher rank probably like. Uh, Probably this should. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's a regular cover, then regular, but otherwise, otherwise you don't know. Yeah. Do you expect it to get bigger or more? <laughs> yeah. So. Um, okay. Yeah. Basically, we. I, I guess, like, uh, we don't know the example here. Um, sorry. What was? Uh, where was I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a uh, like, uh, workshop on non group and higher rank. So I should present a uh, higher, rank, higher rank result uh, for which we don't get this, f uh, like, we don't get a result like, as strong as this one. But we do get uh, a result. Uh, and for that, I, I will be picking up on the notions that was explained by Angira in the previous lectures, which is a directional recurrent set. I think Angira called it like directional conical set, right? The directional conical set. So, so recall that, uh, so my notation, okay, so sorry, I didn't fix this. So this should be limit cone, uh, L gamma, and then uh, psi is a linear form, and I'm going to um, use this notation, nu sub psi, for a conformal measure on the first number boundary. Um, and remember the direction recurrent set, uh, this was, uh, the following, so if you consider uh, one primary subgroup, AT, which is XTV, you can write it XTV where V is in the, uh, uh, you can, okay, you can just think of the case where this is in the wire chamber, positive wire chamber, <coughs> then you have this one primary subgroup. Uh, and I'm going to call it RV, R for recurrence, where this is the set of all X, uh, where this flow is recurrent. So it comes recurrent, meaning that it comes back to the original place. Uh, I mean, it returns to a compact set infinitely often. Then, um, oh, okay, so this is a place I 
uh, define burger robot measure. So I explained uh, like briefly in the, on the board, but you have this whole parameterization, g mode m going to these two times a, and you have some parameterization. And with respect to this coordinate, you can uh, define a generalized um, Boehmer wizard measure. And in particular, um, when you put a conformal measure with respect, to re with respect to a linear form, and here, this is another conformal measure, m sub O for, I, I just wrote this for a uh, uh, k invariant measure. So O is uh, fixed by uh, k. Uh, you put this and then you, you put a Lebesgue measure. And the density, the exact correct density is here on the right, on the, the right side of the board. Uh, if you put the correct density, then this defines a gamma invariant measure. And this is called burger roblox measure. And the name is coming from the fact that, uh, rem remember in one of the previous slides that uh, there's a result of unique ergodicity for SL2R or gamma and uh, gamma is geometrically finite, and then Roblox gener generalized to this. So like uh, so this, this was named in uh, OSHA paper. Uh, they used, uh, they, so they named this measure after that. And then um, we're going to uh, use a higher rank version of this. Higher rank construction is basically the same. You, uh, you put a G mode M and then, okay, so you put, um, Conformal measure could, could be anything, but here you put a k-invariant measure, and you put uh, this burger robot measure. And why do we care about this? Because uh, okay, well, this is a candidate for any invariant measure. But but when you do the uh, when you do the counting or uh, when you want to compute the matrix coefficient of uh, L two of G mod gamma, we will see that the hard matrix coefficient um, usually expected to uh, have a form that uh, which is described by this burger robot measure. So, uh, okay. Um, all right. So, what's the uh, what's the property of burger robot measure? So, you, this is n invariant, and it is a m semi invariant. Semi invariant meaning that if you push forward by an element of a m, uh, the measure only changes by a character. Uh, okay. Okay. So, character of m is trivial. So, it's, it's m invariant, but. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a measure on G1 gamma, and another way to say this is uh, it's a P quasi invariant. P. Oh, and it's, it's not equivalent, but just have in mind that this is a P quasi invariant measure. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, one thing to notice is that if you put your conformal measure to be the one that is supported on the limit set, uh, which doesn't have to be, but if you do that, then the support of the burger roblox measure is going to be described exactly by this set. Uh, I call it calif E, calligraphic E, which is a set of all G whose uh, forward endpoint, the GP minus is like my convention for the first coordinate of half parentization, is being inside uh, the limit set is uh, basically the, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be support of the burger roblox measure. Okay, um, so, so let's also pick up some um, known facts for an also subgroups, which is an also with respect to a minimal parabolic subgroup. In this case, like we have uh, like well understood the theory of, of higher rank pairs and survival measures. So we have uh, first of all, you know that this is actually an ergodic, an ergodic, and if you just look at the if you ask whether this is an ergodic, then it decomposes into finitely many pieces, uh, which doesn't depend on the, uh, the like this number of finite pieces doesn't depend on the choice of the burger robot measure that you take for this analysis sub subgroup. Uh, and there's a uh, like one-to-one -one correspondence. This is due to just uh, this is based. It's basically coming from the fact that um, this one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, uh, Paris and measure. So you have uh, so what is uh, let's remember that this L is a limit cone. So interior of the limit cone, you choose a vector and then I'm just um, just normalizing it just to so they can represent a, a direction. And there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, unit vector in the interior of the limit cone and uh, the set of all p quasi invariant and n m ergodic measure uh, support measure which is supported on E, which is same as the uh, support of the group measure. Uh, all right, uh, so there's um, as a dichotomy. So we will also be needing this fact if you have. Uh, rank, uh, so we saw that if, okay, basically you if you have uh, an also subgroup with respect to minimal parabolic, you have 
uh, this picture where you have a base space and a fiber, a fiber direction. Uh, basically, you can apply the local limit theorem of Babio, which says that um, this is a random walk on the fiber that, uh, whose load depends on the base space. And uh, the, the, like the local limit theorem is basically the same. The, the rate is basically the same. So you get this criteria. So using this, you can prove uh, if, if the rank is less than 3, then this directional recurrence set is going to be conal, and the rank is greater than or equal to 4, then the directional recurrence set is going to be null with respect to the variable measure. What is the answer of B here? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so, oh, yes, it's, a, it's a, like, like a very transparent font. So, yeah. Okay, there's a correspondence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I learned from previous lectures that uh, don't look at this horrible formula. Uh, okay, it's not a horrible formula, but like, just try to minimize. I like horrible formulas, so <laughs> if I'm in the audience, you can give it all to me. Uh, okay, so, yeah, sorry about this. So you have, so you have, uh, I'm going to just call this burger rule measure co that corresponds to this vector v. Uh, I'm just going, going to call this mvbr. Okay. And, and mbr corresponds to which v? M oh, mbr is just uh, every v. Every v. Mm -hmm. Ah, every v. Yeah. 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 So mvbr is uh, an energetic for every v. And then its energetic component always decomposes into finite limit pieces. Okay, um, so now we can state the theorem for uh, this case where you have um, you have the following setup. Like, we, now you have a group that is a product of rank one. So this is also um, this is also the restriction we have. So if we have a product of rank one group, and let's say you have a Sarsky dense uh, subgroup which is also with respect to minimal parabolic, uh, then you meet a Oh, I switch. I, I forgot. Landisberg comes first. Landisberg, Linden, Strauss, and O. We proved that for every V in the interior, um, the following uh, dichotomy holds. So, if uh, if rank of G is less than or equal to three, then um, you have. Uh, if you just look at this set, directional recurrence, that you have uh, unique ergodicity on this set. Um, if rank is greater than or equal to four, then you can uh, you have an absence of measure. So you have this uh, dichotomy. So if like uh, like the theorem, so if rank is high, then the like like Patterson survival measure doesn't detect the doesn't detect this directional recurrence. Set. So in some sense, like like it's, uh, if you, we have like stronger results when your like as your rank goes lower, like the most strongest is uh, the strongest one is the rank one actually. Okay, so the question is, uh, obvious question is like, whether there exists an, any invert ergodic measure mm -hmm. other than this, or some other like trivial example like uh, and this we don't know. Uh, I study 11, right? Yeah, you have 30 minutes. So what is the difference between the question and the survey? The theorem, yeah, the classification. Now, the, <coughs> the previous theorem, like uh, you classified the, the previous theorem. Yeah, yeah, this one is this where you instead of any output, what what was the difference between this? Uh, yeah, you have the P quasi invariant. P quasi invariant. Yeah. Okay. You already so the question is whether uh, yeah. any invariant algorithm implies a quasi invariant. Right. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I did. I did. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. Okay. So. Um, so uh, ideas. Um, yeah. Maybe I should say ingredient rather than idea. So beca because uh, I don't know. Let's let's see where it goes. So so first of all, we call uh, some ergodic theorems, classical ergodic theorems. If you have uh, one permanent subgroup. So here I'm going to take a one permanent subgroup of N. Uh, actually, I'm going to maybe assume uh, n is one-dimensional. Otherwise, I should assume the, the, the version I wrote, I was assuming that NS is uh, also acting ergodically. But OK, so if you have an ergodic action, if you take the time average 
and it converges to the space average. This is a bulk of periodic theorem. Uh, but like if your your measure is not finite, then this time average goes to zero. So if you look at uh, infinite measure, then maybe you can uh, <coughs> look at uh, the ratio ergodic theorem for this one dimension due to Hoff, uh, which says the following. So I did not write down the condition, but here you are assuming that this is not going to be zero. So if you have an uh, uh, um, integral function f1, f2 with respect to mu, and mu almost everywhere, then now you look at this ratio. You look at the time average. Uh, and then it will converge to the ratio of the space average uh, for mu almost every x. What, what is he up to here? What's what? Wh I mean, what, how am I supposed to think about this? Oh, so for example, if you take f, so if you if you think of mu as a finite measure, mm -hmm. uh, you can take f to be a constant. Mm -hmm. F two, you take maybe you take. No, but I don't want to do that. I want it really to be a ratio. Like, why would you take the ratio of two? Burkhoff sums like that. Uh, so you don't know the normalizing factor. Oh, you don't it's really know, just you that. Have to put downstairs, right? Okay. This is why I thought it has something to do with when you take the log of that, it becomes a difference. Okay. There is a theorem that there's no normalizing factor in the infinite point. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So here, um, so if you just do the uh, one-sided flow, oh, sorry, one-sided, uh, one-sided ratio. If you go from zero to t, zero to t, then this is going to be true if you have uh, some conservativity, but we, uh, we don't want to assume this. And without conservativity, you can just do the, like, the both side. Then and this is true. Uh, and we're going to look at a multi-dimensional case as well. And there is a multi-parameter version due to Hockman. So if you have a, like this action, then you can do the same thing for that. OK, uh, so let's see. Uh, OK. so. Um, uh, yeah, so here is um, the promised ingredient uh, or the main proposition that I wanted to state. So here's my notation. So I'm going to call an element x in g mod gamma by this bracket g for the cosine notation. Then here uh, on the right side, you have a point stabilizer. I'm going to call this x stabilizer of x. Then you know, can see that the stabilizer of this one is in g inverse gamma g. Uh, what happens if you take the flow? of some one parameter subgroup. You take G A T, then stabilizer of this guy is uh, 18 inverse G inverse gamma G A T. Okay. Um, all right. So here is a notation that not everyone uses. So, okay. So, so you're going to call some set S mu G. So S is just a letter and mu means that it depends on mu and G means, okay. So th this just means that the quantity depends on mu and G at first uh, thought. Okay, so here's a limb soup, and usually, like, uh, when you write limb soup, this is a like, set theoretic limb soup. But here we meant a topological limb soup. Topological limb soup means uh, it's nothing complicated. You just look at, uh, okay, you, you f fix some t. Fix some t, then you look at this set, which is a point stabilizer. Uh, and as you go to, as you take t to infinity, this set can accumulate something. And you take all the possible accumulation point for any, any sequence going to infinity. So for example, uh, yeah, so, uh, so like lim soup, in my definition, lim soup of this is going to be real number because uh, it can accumulate anywhere. So it's a topological lim soup. And you now define this quantity and like, let's see how it depends. So always, Ah, okay, so you might wonder where, where, what, what role mu is playing, because on the right hand side you don't have mu. Uh, but I wanted to define this mu almost everywhere. I, I'm defining this quantity mu almost every g. Uh, so, so, for, so I'm writing it something like this for so mu almost every g. You look at this quantity, and you notice that if you move g by uh, replace g by uh, g n, where n is in the whole spherical subgroup, then you can see that if a t is in the direction of the uh, interior of the white chamber, then it actually, the limbs of doesn't depend because the a t uh, contracts the part that goes in. So basically, this, is, this set is going to be n invariant. n invariant, and you're assuming that mu is n invariant ergodic, uh, which means this is um, 
object that actually doesn't depend on G if you just look at uh, mu almost everywhere point. Okay, so far so good. All right. Um, okay, so the main step or uh, is the following. So uh, main step of the proof is that mu is quasi invariant under um, lambda of s mu. So more and more notations coming. So lambda is uh, you can think of it as a Jordan projection, but you can also define a Jordan projection that takes value in a m, not just a. Okay. And the main step uh, is that you, we, what we actually prove is that, like for all the circumstances that we had previously, uh, we do have we do get an additional invariance under the condition that mu is an invariant algorithm. And then using this, with this uh, bounded injectivity condition or any uh, other condition, you can try to see like what your measure can be, something like this. Um, wait, what do I want? Uh, I also want to do this. So how, how does it relate to directional cone equality? Uh, so for example, so, okay, so suppose, so suppose, let's, Maybe just assume that mu is uh, uh, ergo by measure, so uh, associated to some direction. Then um, maybe if rank is uh, less than equal to three, then if you know that uh, mu almost every g for mu almost every g, you know that uh, there exists a sequence uh, gamma i in gamma uh, t i in R such that gamma i g a t i is bounded because it's going to be recurrent. Oh, so it's basically, okay, so this is bounded. So I, all I'm saying is that gamma g a t is recurrent. If, if gamma g a t is recurrent, it just means that there exists a sequence gamma i and gamma and then t i such that this is uh, coming back to the complex set. So, so this uses the theorem with Berger, right? Oh, uh, this, yeah, 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 I'm using this, I'm using this. We've mentioned Berger. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Berger renders Berger. Yeah, 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 I think I mentioned this in the, like, some slides before, like, uh, uh, no, 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 not here. Yeah, 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 this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, basically I'm using this. So if rank is less than three, and uh, where am I? So oh. a, a sub ti is in the three direction. In the in the. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so maybe x ti v is bound. So this. Is con after passing to subsequence, this converges to say some element h. That means uh, if you take the limb soup of, okay, so limb soup, you're going to take limb soup of this guy, which is eight. So at my at is this one. So at inverse g inverse gamma g at. But this is the same object as uh, you can put gamma i g. ATI, gamma uh, i inverse g inverse ATI inverse. Uh, so if this is an element of this guy. And then if you take the limb soup, and you know that this is converging to H, so this actually converges. Uh, and my board management is not very great. So you, you know that this converges to uh, this subgroup. So it means that if you take the limb, so you get this one. And we, if you believe this main proposition, then you know that your measure mu is uh, invariant under this, uh, uh, the generalized Jordan projection of this guy, which we can uh, give a like, full AM invariance. Can I comment? Yes. So in the general setup, though, in which mu is not a Boolean measure, what mm -hmm. is AD then? Oh, 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 oh. So so basically, you can what you can do is uh, you don't have you, actually you don't have to restrict it to one primary subgroup. You can just go choose any AI going to infinity in a, like regularly, so that like it goes away from the uh, wall of the bi chamber. Then still this makes sense. 
and this is uh, an invariant. Um, but the problem is, uh, is uh, we don't know to conclude in the higher rank whether you have this uh, strong in, uh, additional invariance. If you have this, then you can solve the previous like, open question. So, so let's stop in all of this is that mu is a program number. <coughs> or, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, so like I, I, I don't understand like what's the relation between mu and AT or, oh, or oh. for any one parameter flow. Any, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, right. So any, any, um, uh, for any AT uh, in the <laughs> interior of the Y chamber, you take this and then uh, if it's not in the right direction, this SMU is going to be yeah. trivial, so yeah. you don't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you for asking. So yeah, I have 70 minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know if... So I'm, I'm going to do the heuristic of... Uh, because, because I have... Uh, okay, let me okay let me do as far as I can go. So here is... Um, so maybe like... It's a, like really heuristic uh, of the proof. Uh, oh, wait, this part is not heuristic. So what you do is the following. So, uh, so, so you want to get an additional invariance under this uh, generalized Jordan projection. So I'm going to call uh, maybe that L to be lambda. Oh, okay, so this is. Uh -huh. So, so let's say L is uh, lambda, and let me call it lambda G. So this is in lambda. So I'm going to call it, okay, so I can have it be this way. So, so L is in lambda S mu, and I want to prove the invariance under this element. So I'm going to call it uh, L is lambda G for some inside S mu. Then I want to get an additional invariance. Then what you do, um, you argue by contradiction. So you want to say uh, mu L is same as mu. And the point is that uh, here, you can, if, if you know that if they are not invariant, then just from the fact that this L uh, normalizes N, you can say that uh, if they are not, they're either uh, same thing or mutually singular. So you're going to assume by contradiction they're going to be mutually singular. Uh, and what, what's the, what we're trying to do is the following. So you want to argue by contradiction and you, you define, so you so say you have a mutually singular condition mu and mu dot L. Uh, then you want, you can choose uh, some continuous function. It doesn't have to be continuous function, you can actually choose any Bora set that uh, feels the difference, that feels, uh, they witness the uh, mutually singularity of these two guys in the sense that uh, mu of f, you can choose some continuous function that one of them is very large or one of them is like very small. So that if you look at the ratio, uh, there I think, I think I did it this way. Yes? Oh, was there a question? Was there right? Yeah. Okay, so. Um, you can you can choose a continuous function that this is a like really small. So I think I just wrote like ten to the minus three. Uh, if they are mutually singular, you can do this for a very general set. Uh, and then you want to uh, basically you can write this is mu f perf over mu f, where f perf is basically some trans uh, the translation of f by this element l. Actually, you have to like uh, do some thickening, but uh, I don't want to go over this. Like, very okay. So uh, here's a argument. So or like the direction. So you know you can choose uh, such f that witnesses uh, mutually singularity, and this quantity you can make as arbitrary as you want. Uh, and if you uh, use the ratio ergodic theorem, that this is going to be the uh, if you take sufficiently large window, then this is, uh, you can make this ergodic average or the ratio of the ergodic average almost <coughs> same as this guy, and then it should be really small. And for some reason, if you can say that this is uh, greater than some definite amount, then you win. 
uh, okay, if you know C from the beginning, then you can choose this to be, say, C over 2. Okay, you will get a contradiction. Okay, so the way, uh, what you can try is the following. So what you're going to do is, uh, maybe you can hope for the following. So uh, if you have, um, so what you want is that the denominator is greater than C times that. So you want this kind of inequality. And uh, if you can s you obtain this kind of inequality for some uh, maybe local version, uh, for some local covers, and then you can like manage this with uh, like bounded overlap, uh, and then for each cover, if you have this inequality, then you will get you can get something like this. Yeah, like I'm not really like okay, so it's just um yeah, it's like uh, like I'm telling a story like not not a mathematics, but all right. So here's the following. So what what you can do is um, okay. So what does it mean that G is in S mu? So remember that S mu was the limb soup of the stabilizer of uh, G A T, where T goes to infinity. So it means that uh, for mu almost every point, you can find the sequence A T I going to infinity in a prescribed direction with uh, element G I that stabilizes this guy, where G I converges to Z. This is, the, this is uh, what you have from uh, this second line, L is lambda G for some G in S mu. That just translates into this property. Now you have this, and then you look at uh, uh, what you can obtain. Uh, and, uh, and then I made a typo in my. Uh, yeah, I wrote something, but I made a typo. So, okay, so, yeah. uh, okay, so don't pay too much attention on the details, but. So you look at, uh, you wanted to say that this is somehow greater than, if you go, you go along, uh, that you, you want to say that this is somehow greater than uh, the average for some C. This is what you are looking for. Uh, then uh, now you want to say, using this condition, uh, you want to see like how this uh, limb soup, how this condition on limb soup tells you about the ratio of the average. And uh, so I made a typo, and then I think I I won't like try writing the uh, lambda. Lambda is a generalized Jordan projection. You can just think of it as a Jordan projection. What's the compact part you said? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So so there's a typo, but like okay, don't care too much about it. So when you do this, okay. When you do this, the argument is something like this. You, you, want, to, you want to first write this. You're reparameterizing it using this uh, horosphericle parameterization. There should be uh, some factor here, like e to the d times t, but I just didn't write it. But, uh, and then when you do, after you do it, you can put inside uh, the gi, because gi is a stabilizer of x prime ati. But you can do it as many times as you want. As man many times as you want, and then you want to split this like this. Uh, and if k is chosen, uh, large, then this guy, gi to the k minus 1, uh, will uh, squash this unit interval into the fixed point of gi. I, I'm assuming that gi is a Luxor-Jurmic element. So gi k minus 1 and s is a like, Luxor-Jurmic element, which is very close to the fixed point of gi. And when, uh, when the next gi hits this guy, uh, then you, some, you can do some computation. It will spit out something that is uh, this guy. Uh, and then, uh, yes, I, that's, I, I, I made a typo somewhere, but, and so to do this uh, carefully, but just uh, get the feeling. So you get this L, and then when you, when you do this, all this business, what you will end up is something like this. Uh, and what is phi of S? It is this map. So you have some unit interval, 0, 1. Uh, you apply a high power of gik or gik, and it will uh, squash this interval into uh, some small interval, and it's going to be centered at the fixed point of uh, so fixed point of gi. That is what you're, is what this is doing. But and I'm going to call this. This map is what I called phi here. 
So um, don't uh, just the takeaway is that when you do this, you have you have some comparison. Uh, so the less inequalities, uh, maybe up to here. So you have some comparison, but the base point is changing. So for example, if you knew that this phi of s was, if you knew that the fixed point was actually uh, containing the interval that you started with, then you actually have that this map phi has a Jacobian smaller than one. You actually have a nested interval, and you you are very happy. You can actually compute. Com compute this, uh, compare this directly using some uh, change of variable. Uh, but the uh, but the problem is if this is not if this is not the case, then what you're doing is you're looking at the average, and when you do this, uh, 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 the the correct statement will give you like if you do average from minus ti to ti of f perp. Uh, you get something like this is greater than C uh, for a window that is centered at this guy. You will get something like this. Uh, and this is, uh, like this doesn't like match uh, very well with our argument. So, uh, but what, what you can do is something, something like this. Wait, well, you can try to do this instead. Instead of looking at this window minus ti to ti, maybe you can just start averaging at the window that is Based at this guy, based at this guy, then you will have some this contraction. Uh, but the algebra is like not very super clear how why this should work. But uh, the the thing that I have to convey is that you you want uh, there is you might hope to get a comparison with a similar window if you are if you try to center this at the uh, fixed point of uh, fixed point of this uh, lots of geometric element. Uh, and when you do this, um, uh, the original scheme, remember that the original scheme you are looking for is try to estimate this guy. Uh, but what, what we do in our proof is that we are not getting contradiction with this guy, uh, but uh, we introduce another set. We introduce another set that is uh, something like this. So let, let me call it Q. Q is the set inside G mod gamma where you you look at when you look at some this ratio. Uh, this is greater than um, C for uh, for exactly the same C. Uh, then um, you should think of this set as a this is a bad set, meaning that this is the uh, opposite of being generic. So very you should, you should feel a uh, very little measure. Uh, and what the argument will get, give you if you modify this argument the uh, the uh, if you do this modification, the, uh, the argument gives you the following. So instead of uh, looking at the window, if you take a generic x prime, then you can uh, sort of find a point, maybe uh, that is almost uh, that is almost this guy. Uh, so what is this? T i and G i. So this is a uh, n sub G i means the suffix point of G i, and T i was the sequence associated there. Uh, anyway, so there is some relation. So for mu almost every x prime, uh, you get, you know that this if you have, uh, you know that this is going to be lying in the bad set. This is what you get uh, heuristically. So uh, you can actually do the. Uh, um, you can actually do the version that gives you, an, like, that sort of gives you that you can do this also for an, some interval. So you have a generic interval. Uh, it will map, if you do this translation, then it will map this generic interval into a bad interval. And using this set Q, you get uh, some contradiction, not by using mu f perf or mu f. But some uh, with a different set, and they will give uh, 
they will allow us to get a contradiction. And I just mentioned that, uh, okay, so, so, so this covering thing, so estimates on each cover, uh, okay, I just, uh, I just say, um, just maybe explain a not very rigorous scheme. A covering with boundary overlay is coming from a basic coverage uh, covering property because you're taking, um, uh, Uh, okay, okay, maybe, okay, let, let me just mention that you can do this by basic coverage covering property. Uh, and yeah, I think I finish here. Wait, do I have? No, 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 I think, I, yeah, okay. <laughs> So where did you use the fact that we is a product of length? Uh, good question. Good question. Uh, because the best coverage covering property failed. Uh, so if you so you're looking at the near port angle, and then uh, there's so like ratio regarding theorem might be true, but ratio regarding theorem is not known for uh, general near port. What you have is what what you have instead is this. Uh, ratio maximal inequality, uh, and this will complicate like things more. And just uh, so we don't know the statement for SLNR, for example. SLNR, we, SLNR and gamma is poor. Uh, like uh, so, it, we don't we don't know. Don't know. Any more questions? No, no. No more questions, so let's answer the video.